ideas are imprinted upon the subconscious through emotion. No idea can be impressed upon the subconscious until it is felt, but once experienced, whether positive, negative, or neutral, it must manifest. Emotion is the sole channel through which ideas reach the subconscious. Therefore, one who does not master their emotions can impregnate the subconscious with undesired states. Mastery of emotions does not refer to repression or suppression of them, but rather to the self-discipline to conceive and imagine only those feelings that contribute to happiness. Controlling your emotions is essential for a fulfilling and prosperous life. Neville Goddard asserted that feeling was the secret. If you truly understand this, you must play a role larger than yourself and then trust in it completely, as described in the letter of John, in the fifth chapter of his first epistle, if we believe that he hears us in whatever we ask, then we know that we have received what we asked for. Well, if you have the right faith, you will have no doubt about whether he heard you or not, because you will know that he heard you, and that is God. However, if you are not entirely certain that he heard you because there are billions of people praying alongside you, you might not be very confident that he heard you. You might even question yourself, wondering if you deserve to be heard. But you can never deny that you hear your own inner voice, your own mental dialogue. Well, if you recognize that this is the voice of God, then you will be sure that he heard you. Now we are told in that fifth chapter, verse 15 of the first epistle of John, if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, then we know that we have already received what we asked for. Alright, there is a lapse of time between the imaginative act and its realization, just as there is a lapse of time between a man's creative act and the birth of that baby. Every little action requires a specific period of time from the moment it is performed until its culmination, a horse takes 12 months, a pregnant woman takes 9 months, a pregnant sheep takes 5 months, a chick takes 21 days. There are different time periods. So, it may take more time in certain cases, with certain people, 2 months may be enough to bring back 4,000 people who have lost their job, to calm their minds and eliminate the fear of being fired. It may take a little more time, just a few more months, three years and two months will complete their 30 years with Jones and Lon, and then, what does one more year matter to a man of his age? Six more years and then social security, so he will get both benefits. If it happened now, he wouldn't get it, he would be excluded from social security and left without a good pension plan. Then she comes back and reminds him that it had happened before, he couldn't pay for the house's roof and she said, I see the roof on the house. I remember when we needed a roof. So she just reminds him, he told her, I remember telling you, I remember when we needed it. And soon after, something happened in his job, he got the money, and the roof is on the house. The wife wanted an organ, they couldn't afford it. Well, she said, I remember when we didn't have one. Now they have the organ, and she has been taking one thing after another from all these things and still with all the evidence in the world, he keeps working on some external god. He thinks he is doing wrong, he feels that, by chance, that man is simply a devil incarnate and is moving him away from his true god, which means something external to himself that he modeled with his own mind and passions with his hand, because all these little trinkets that you buy and place as sacred objects. First of all, no artist really designed them, it is an offense to speak of an artist when you see these horrible monstrosities that we buy and place around the place and call them religious objects. So, finding out who he is, he is the living God, he is our dead God. You want to find Psalm 115 about the kind of gods men worship, the whole psalm is dedicated to the false god that the vast world worships. It has eyes but does not see, ears but does not hear, feet and does not walk, hands and does not touch, just a dead thing made by human hands when the living God is within man as his own wonderful human imagination. So I tell you that everything you perceive, though it seems external, is within your own wonderful human imagination, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. All things exist in the human imagination, and everything you see as objective reality was produced by imagination. Think of a single thing, just think of one thing that simply denies it. You can't think of a single thing. So you go to the moon, you first had to imagine it, you had to imagine everything concerning the machine that took you to the moon. Everything in the world first has to be imagined and then executed. Well, the intelligence to do it will come, but you take the blueprint first and you conceive it and dwell in it as if it were true, 
and no power on earth can prevent it from becoming a reality. Your visions will become clearer over time, it's a different kind of night, your days are different, you see people differently. You can't go past any man and not see God incarnate. You can't do it, even if he has the most horrible background and is simply a murderer and it's proven that he is, you still see God incarnate. But some days, the poor thing doesn't know it, if only you could reach him and show him that he really is God incarnate, and the one he thought he killed has been restored, has been restored to life, not to man's senses, but is restored in a world just like this one, earthly, just like this one, going about his business, he continues his work until he too awakens from this dream of life. But everyone will awaken eventually, but why not start now? Start now telling man who he really is, God and man are one, man is all imagination and God is man and exists in us and we in him, the eternal body of man is the imagination, and that is God himself, nothing but God in the universe. Oh God, and eventually you and I will awaken and, because God is one, not two, you and I are one without loss of identity. That's one of the strangest mysteries in the world, without loss of identity, we are one. I know that from my own personal experience, we are one and yet, I am individualized and you are individualized and we retain forever, so, whatever, greater and greater individualization and yet, we are one. I will bring that to the best ability of six as we proceed with this series of lectures, you will hear it, but tonight, if you are here for the first time, you desire something practical, so put it into practice. First and foremost, you must have an objective. You might say, well, I'm not sure what I want. That's alright, come back later and ask yourself, what would I like to achieve in life? Don't be afraid to identify it, what would I like to accomplish in life? Well, then try to set some sort of goal. Now, prayer, in my view, is nothing more than the subjective appropriation of the objective hope. That's the path to success. I subjectively appropriate it. How do I subjectively appropriate a state? Well, let's imagine that right now I desired a ball, a regular baseball, but there is no baseball in the room. Well, but I want one. I would genuinely assume that I am holding a baseball in my hand until I can feel it. Do you believe you can't feel it? Well, now try to imagine what it would be like if you were holding a baseball. Now, to demonstrate that you have held it, notice how it feels different now, a tennis ball, do you notice any difference? Okay, a golf ball, do you notice any difference? A piece of silk, do you feel any difference? If you can distinguish between these various objects even though they are subjective, then they must exist somewhere. If you can truly separate them in your mind's eye and distinguish between these objects, I can start to feel, start to think, start to smell a rose. Well, the rose does not smell or does not really have the scent of another flower. I can detect the rose now, a lily, an Easter lily. I can, but what does it do? Well, I'm going to get them, someone will think of Neville and send a flower, and it's going to be the flower that I'm going to actually feel and touch and smell, but it works that way. Money has a smell, it's different from any other in the world, it's more fragrant to the miser than the most wonderful perfume in the world. He can smell it. You can feel it. Money has a distinctive feeling. Put a $20 bill in your hand and ask him to feel it, and then put another piece of paper in your hand and you could tell the difference. There is a difference, it has a smell. All this is part of the inner man, that all things are possible to him. Try it before you condemn it. Try it, and if you have the evidence to back up my claim, then it doesn't matter what the world tells you. If it laughs at you, remember the laughter of everyone who had an idea that seemed a bit out of the ordinary, they always laughed at him. The idea of going to the moon, well, now it's a fait accompli. There are still those who won't believe it happened, you know, because they don't want to believe it ever happened. Those who said you couldn't go down and actually live under the water, now we have a submarine. There are still those who won't believe it. You can present them with all the facts in the world, and they won't believe it. So I tell you, feel it first and it will prove itself in performance. It really doesn't matter what the whole world thinks. Attend to your father's business, which is yourself, and then live a full and wonderful life in this world of Caesar. The day will come when you will actually depart from this age because those who are departing now, unless they are awake, they still find themselves in a world just like this one. 
But those who have awakened, who have experienced the second birth, their birth from above, find themselves in an entirely different age where they are pure imagination and they are perfect. Wherever you go, everything is perfect. You don't have to lift a finger to make anything perfect because perfect. All things must conform to this for your service, that's heaven. So heaven is not an area, it's not a realm. When that body awakens within you, which is the wonderful human imagination fully awake, then wherever you go, dressed in that body that is fully awake, everything is perfect. If you found yourself in a forest of dead trees, they would all sprout in foliage, in the desert, everything would bloom like the rose because you are there. No blind man, deaf man, no disabled man could be in your presence, he would instantly be transformed into a perfect man because you are perfect. That's heaven. It's harmony, it's not a place with pearl streets and all that nonsense. It's simply you in a world that is perfect because you are perfect. The day will come when you will awaken that body within you. Now that body is in you, but it's asleep. One day you will experience the resurrection and know the mystery of the resurrection when you rise within yourself from the tomb in which Christ is buried because the Lord is buried, that's where he's buried, in that tomb where he's buried. One day he will awaken and come out of that tomb. It's you who comes out of the tomb and you know who you are. It's buried in every child in the world, this universal being, and yet, millions of us and yet, only one Lord. That one Lord in his fullness is buried in you individually. When you awaken, it's you. So tonight, take a goal, make it a lovely goal, whether for yourself or for another. Every time you exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of another, you are mediating God to that other. So bring a friend before the eye of your mind, see them as the man or woman you would like them to be and don't tell them, don't ask for praise, just assume they are telling you the most wonderful news about themselves. Congratulate them on that good news and go your way believe in the reality of that imaginative act. It might happen tomorrow, it might happen a day after, or a week after, or a month after, it has its own appointed hour and it's ripening and it's going to blossom. So don't worry, leave it alone and it will happen. This is what I mean by feeling is the secret. Catch the mood, the feeling that would be yours if you were what you want to be. I don't touch something, I can if I want to, but it's the mood I'm talking about. What would the feeling be like if she were well, if she were this? Then you capture it as if it were true. You always go to the end and the end is where you begin. You're always imagining ahead of your evidence. Go to the end, assume the end, and then dwell in that end, even though reason denies it and your senses deny it. You turn your back on the doubters, which are your senses and what reason dictates. That's hell or the devil or Satan in the world. So you turn your back and walk as if things were as you want them to be. Living in that assumption, it slowly hardens into fact, even though at the moment of assumption it was denied by reason. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. So you learn to assume and to persist in the assumption and it will happen. If you found this video interesting and useful, consider sharing it with your friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest information. Thank you and I hope to see you again soon.